More than 100 years ago, these Australian horses carried our troops to victory in the First World War. We sent 130,000 of them to the Middle East. Only one came home. The thing that made me give up this lovely lifestyle in Australia and move to Egypt permanently was when I learnt that a lot of the horses here are descended from our Australian war horses. They were left behind after the First World War and the horses here would have some of their blood still in them. And I think you see it. These horses are so brave, so hardy, so tough. I really see it. It's been eight years since Jill Barton and her then-husband sold almost everything they owned to start a horse hospital in Egypt. Jill and her team offer free treatment to a steady stream of sick and injured workhorses at a rescue clinic in Abu Sir in the country's north. Often they come in extremely skinny and wounded. They might be lame, they might have internal diseases or injuries from being in traffic accidents. I have become a bit desensitised. And so I'm not like in floods of tears every day, but I'll never get used to the cruelty. Horses here don't lead an easy life. Their owners are poor and rely on them for their livelihood. They're treated like vehicles. These owners are not animal lovers. They're just using the horse to make an income. It's estimated there are more than a million working horses and donkeys in Egypt used for transport, agriculture and tourism. Pulling carriages for tourists to ride in and also just straight horse riding with the tourists mostly in the pyramid area. There's a serious lack of well-trained vets and most horse owners couldn't afford to pay for treatment anyway. There is a belief that animals don't feel pain so they don't see it the same way that we do. Jill and three vets tend around 75 animals a day. He's in really bad condition. He's actually got a really sore eye. He's really hot and sweaty. Just really dull and down. So we're going to try and convince these guys to admit him. Sometimes euthanasia is the only option. In the early days, it was very hard to convince owners, but now some people actually know that the horse is hopeless and they bring it to us for euthanasia. So, you know, things are slowly changing. A big part of Jill's job is teaching locals how to care for their animals once she's patched them up. Often we have these owners coming asking for the foreigner vet, like the blonde vet, so you could call her. They know that Jill feels for the animal. So they really respect her. The hardest part of the work for me here is seeing the animals suffering. I really have this affinity with horses and I really feel their suffering. Good boy. Jill is a very kind person. She cares about the animal and the welfare and she can read the body language. I think this is the number one thing I learned from Jill, how to read the animal, how to speak his language. There's many that have a special place in my heart, but there's one little guy called Sooty that we rescued quite a few years ago now. And when he first came, he didn't like humans at all. He didn't want to be touched or patted. He just wanted to be left alone. But slowly, slowly he came around and now he's like, you know, the biggest cuddle bunny that we have. The sweetest little guy now. Her dream is to buy some land to build a new hospital and keep training local vets. I can't save all of the horses here because the numbers are too many, but what we can do is to try and educate owners, educate tourists. I would like to see an end to the horses that are used in tourism because you have to ask yourself, is your five minutes of fun really worth their lifetime of suffering? And Jill's motivated not just by compassion, but by a sad chapter in our military history. I felt that we had abandoned those horses all those years ago and now we're still abandoning all their descendants. I couldn't just go home and forget about it. I had to come back and do something to help. What a wonderful woman and what important work she's doing. If you'd like more information on Jill's rescue clinic or how you can donate, just head to our website.